the link between creativity and insanity is well known, and the idea of the mad artist, the tortured musician or the tormented poet continues to resonate. Touched by madness, Van Gogh's life and work is of far more interest than that of mild manic Monet. Insanity fascinates us. The only thing more intriguing is evil. Klaus Kinski had both. Es gibt jetzt zwei Möglichkeiten. Entweder die, die nicht zu dem Gesindel gehören, schmeißen die anderen raus, oder sie haben ihr Geld um Lund bezahlt. Telch, Czech Republic, is a 14th century town notable for its large town square and long plaza of resplendent Renaissance and Baroque architecture. Klaus Kinski arrived in Telch, then Czechoslovakia, in 1979 to begin filming Wojciech with director Werner Herzog. They'd just finished filming Nosferatu the Vampire together. Herzog had decided to shoot both films back to back using the same exhausted actor and crew. With just five days break in between, Kinski was described as being in a peculiar and fragile mood. Herzog was going to use that. He was the only director to collaborate with Kinski multiple times. Their relationship produced onset rages, personal animosity, death threats, and five films. Aguirre, The Wrath of God, 1972, Nosferatu, The Vampire, and Wojciech, 1979, Fritz Carollo, 1982, and Cobra Verde, 1987. The film Wojciech is based on an incomplete drama fragment by playwright George Buckner. Franz Wojciech is a helpless, abused soldier, powerless in society, assaulted on all sides by forces he cannot control. <laughs> Andres, hörst du's? Es geht was. Fassen ab, das Grüne. Es geht hinter mir her. Unter mir. Slowly, he descends into paranoia, madness, and murder. To add yet more reality to the suffering of Wojciech, Herzog insisted on extremely long, unbroken takes. There are only 27 cuts in the entire movie. Kinski, directed by Herzog, poured his madness into films like Wojciech, where he explored the darker side of humanity with passionate intensity. Klaus Kinski was one of the most controversial German artists of all time. In 1950, he was admitted to a psychiatric hospital where he was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. Kinski fled and remained untreated. He was hated by many, including his family. The most egregious indictment comes from his daughter Paula. Nearly 20 years after his death, she revealed that from age 5 to 19, she was sexually abused by her father. Nastasia Kinski expressed support for her half-sister and described their father as an unpredictable tyrant. Madness and creativity are together rooted in the unconscious. The arts, be it music, painting, writing or film, are the land of fantasy. And people whose lives are tumultuous, either because of psychological issues or from childhood trauma, are drawn to fantasy as an escape. Dark emotions, loneliness, paranoia, anger, sexual fantasy, repressed in everyday life, can be expressed creatively, raw and unfiltered. The madness of the mind made manifest. In that desire to create, being a good, fully adjusted, normal person is secondary and somewhat immaterial, perhaps even detrimental. 
John Lennon changed the music, culture and values of his era, had his first wife Cynthia and all but ignored their son Julian. Morrissey and Ma created music with art in it that still connects with teenage listeners. They also willfully connived to cut fellow Smiths Andy Rourke and Mike Joyce out of an equitable share of royalties. Caravaggio painted the most important detailed works of the Baroque period. He also killed a man in a brawl. Wagner was a virulent anti-Semite, yet aspired to remake the world with beauty at its heart through music. Picasso was no saint, and neither was Sinatra. The mad ones, the disagreeable, alcoholics and drug addicts, are often on close terms with humanity's dark side, and their art uniquely reflects their by no means isolated struggle and psychological disintegration. Normal society seeks conformity, and mainstream art and entertainment place authenticity with spectacle and sugar-coated homogeneity. People content themselves with trivia and false narratives with little desire to recognize the simple truth. Like an addict in denial, like a patient who runs from treatment. Dependent on whether you solely count political executions or include deaths as a result of his policies such as the Holodomor Joseph Stalin was responsible for the deaths of between 6 and 20 million of his own people. Yet 56% of Russians today say that Stalin was a great leader. The level of detachment from reality that must be involved in coming to such a conclusion is staggering. Just how deep does insanity run in the human race? Roughly 6 billion of the world's population believe in the existence of a supernatural god, trusting in fantasies conceived by Stone Age peoples who knew less about the world than your average five-year-old child does today. Eckhart Tolle puts it this way, If the history of humanity were the clinical case history of a single human being, the diagnosis would have to be chronic paranoid delusions a pathological propensity to commit murder and acts of extreme violence and cruelty against his perceived enemies, his own unconsciousness projected outward. Criminally insane with a few brief lucid intervals. By far the greatest part of violence that humans inflicted on each other is not the work of criminals or the mentally deranged, but of normal, respectable citizens in service of the collective ego. One can go so far as to say that on this planet, normal equals insane. Which brings us back to Telch and Klaus Kinski. In the five films he made with Werner Herzog, Kinski offers a mesmerizing glimpse into the nature and depth of human darkness. A reminder of the continuing insanity and evil in mankind. A harsh, uncomfortable truth laid open to the bone. And it was not all acting. Great art is often made by people who live on the edge, struggling with personal demons. And looking into the abyss, their art becomes them, and they become their art. And in their art, the message shines brightly, brutally, and often briefly. If only humans could grasp it.